So let's talk a little bit about applications to double and triple integrals. Uh, we are mainly going to be focusing a lot on double integrals. Uh, but before we get into like the real word problems and uh, actual applications, let's first start talking about a very important topic that's going to lead us into chapter 16. So this is going to be surface area. So uh, let S be a surface with the equation Z equals F of X comma Y and f has continuous partial derivatives. So we're going to assume that the function itself is greater than or equal to zero, meaning that it's above the x and y plane, so it's on the positive z-axis. And the domain d of f is a rectangle, okay? So um, the whole purpose of this is that we have some sort of function that we wanna be able to find the surface area of. So we don't care about the volume underneath this particular graph, we care more about the actual surface itself. So I want to know uh, what exactly, if I was looking at these patches, right, how much area, so, which in this case we call surface area, is in here. Not so much the volume underneath this curve. So that's kind of the, the point of this. So uh, we're going to go ahead and divide the, the region, the um, the domain of R into small little rectangles. So just like before, and we're going to have delta A equal delta X times delta Y. Okay, so that's kind of like the same way that we were looking at um, at volume. So um, we're going to go ahead and let X, I, and Y, J be a corner of the region itself. Okay, so this guy. And basically the whole point of this is that we're going to take a look at the tangent plane of this particular surface s so we got the surface s and we're going to look at the tangent plane so what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be approximating the surface area of this guy by using a tangent plane so for example let's say i, I take here this point and what we're going to do is we're going to find a, a plane that's tangent to this particular point and you can see that this particular tangent plane this plane at this particular point almost kind of approximates the area or the surface area of this entire surface s <clears throat> so you can kind of imagine what's going to happen we're going to make these tangent planes to be very very small we're going to add them up and and go ahead and add them up and eventually this will turn into an integral okay so how are we going to do that so uh what we're going to be doing is that we're going to create a whole bunch of little uh, tangent planes and we're going to call that ti so delta tij okay so that's the whole point so we're going to uh, have this this type of plane and we're going to uh, you know because um, this plane is not going to be exactly a rectangle you know because it's it can be um, a little bit different though sides itself can be pointing in different directions right because of the partial derivatives uh, we it makes sense for us to treat this as a parallelogram Okay, and one of the things about parallelograms is that we know how to find the area of parallelograms, All right? So um, now, obviously, this makes sense for us to just sum, um, take the summation from both the x direction and the y direction uh, of all of these different tangent planes. So our approximation of the total area of the surface is just going to improve as we increase the number of rectangles, okay? So you can kind of think that the surface area is approximately equal to the limit as m and n go to infinity. So as we make infinitely many little rectangles and we add up all of these little tangent planes on this particular surface. So that will be kind of like our, our surface area. All right, now the big thing is like, how the heck do we find the area of this particular parallelogram. Well, um, what we're going to do is we're going to consider the following thing. So we know that uh, back in chapter 12, we found the area of a parallelogram. The area of a parallelogram was just the magnitude of the cross product of two vectors, u and v. So this is kind of the area of the of the parallelogram. This is back, uh, back when we were in in the beginning chapters. So, um, again, we're going to have two different vectors, right? So let's say vector A is, is pointing uh, towards in the i direction and vector B is going pointing kind of towards the, the y direction, okay? Uh, obviously, these guys are going to be associated with some sort of slopes, okay? Because they're not going to be exactly going in that direction. So here, we're going to let A and B be vectors uh, that start at point P, I, J. So remember, this is at the corner. So here's our, our point, right? And we are going to have two different vectors, 
um, A and B. Uh, and what we're going to do is, uh, because we know that our area is going to be the magnitude of A and B, it will make sense for us to figure out what exactly A and B are. Okay, so uh, so recall that the tangent lines are just a partial derivatives through the point P, I, J in the direction of A and B. So basically, in this direction, we're just moving. So we want to know, okay, what's exactly happening in the in the I direction and also in the B direction and notice that that's just a partial derivatives. So the I component is going to be in the direction of delta X, right? We know that this guy is delta X, right? And we want to know how far this is going. Well, if whenever we do a tangent approximation, that's just a partial derivative. So that's why we have the partial derivative F sub X, okay, times delta X. All right, same thing with this guy. We have in the direction of this guy is going to be uh, delta y in the j direction because it's going in the direction of y and then whatever our partial derivative is times delta y. All right, so this is going to be kind of like the two, um, our two um, vectors, our vector equation. So you can actually write it in component form, but that makes sense. Delta x, you have zero on the in the y component because we're not going anywhere and then our partial derivative with respect and then times delta x and then this guy is going to be uh zero in the in the y direction in the x direction delta y and then f sub y delta y okay so that's how we get these guys okay um and you can kind of remember this why is it this way well remember that the equation of the tangent plane is z zero plus f sub x x minus x zero plus f sub y, y minus y zero. So you can kind of think about this as, as delta x and delta y, all right? So in that direction. All right, so all we really got to do is take the cross product. So um, here is basically what you end up getting when you cross these two vectors, okay? Uh, you'll notice that you have a delta x, delta y on each uh, each of the components. So we're going to factor that out. And remember, delta x and delta y is just delta a. All right, so what what we end up getting is is taking this vector, taking the magnitude of A, and what you end up finding is something that's really surprising. It's just going to be the square root of the partial derivative of X squared plus the partial derivative of Y squared, there should be a parenthesis here, plus 1 dA, delta A. Taking the summation of that, we yield this particular formula. Okay, so um, not a bad derivation, but it is... Um, it is a little lengthy, but this is basically what you really want to be able to know. Okay, this guy. Okay, so um, one thing to really take into consideration is that the surface can be oriented in various different planes. So in this case, we decided that our surface was going to be in towards the z plane, right? So z is equal to a function of x and y. So this was the formula for z is equal to a function of x and y. But also take into consideration that it can be... Um, in various different um, um, in, in different orientations. So, for example, if you had a, a surface going in this direction, so now instead it's what's going in the y direction. So maybe you had something that looked like this in this direction, and this y was a function of x and z. Then, in that case, my formula would be a little bit different. So my area, my surface area, would be the double integral over the region d the square root, so we're going to take the partial derivative with respect to x and then square that. We're going to add it to the partial derivative with respect to z now and then plus 1. So everything is kind of the same. The only thing now, if you take a look at, is that our partial derivatives are going to be a little different. So instead of having a y component, because now it's a function of y, y is the one where we're looking at, uh, in this case, we're going to look at z, all right, and vice versa. Same thing if you had another one going in the x direction, then you'll have y and an x. I'm sorry, y and z. So uh, let's go ahead and do an example, all right. So these problems can get really messy because you can tell that there's with a the square root, this can be kind of horrific. So you uh, uh, you have to be very very um, good with your with your integrating. 
So let's find the surface area of the part of the paraboloid z equals 9 minus x squared minus y squared that lies between z equals 0 and z equals 5. So let's go ahead and take my graph. So I know the paraboloid goes up to 9. So there's 9. It's going to go downward. All right, but we're going to take a look at uh, the part, the surface area of the part of the paraboloid that lies between z equals 0. So basically starting from here. So here is z equals 0. Okay, all the way to z equals 5. So let's say this is 5. So ending here. So imagine that I had like paper that I wanted to like that I wanted to fill this in. So if I had construction paper and I wanted to fill in all of this part, not necessarily the inside, okay? You're just filling out the outside of the paraboloid. So we want to know the outside, outside, okay? So all of that is surface area, not so much the volume. So be very careful that we're talking about surface area now. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and, and write down our formula. So our formula in this case would be the surface area would be the double integral over the region D, okay, square root of, I'm going to write F sub X squared plus F sub Y squared plus 1 uh, DA. So uh, if you look at our function, our function is with respect to Z, okay, so this is basically F of X comma Y is equal to 9 minus X squared minus Y squared. We require our partial derivative, so f sub x is just equal to negative 2x, f sub y is just negative 2y, and we're just going to plug both of those partial derivatives inside. So this guy is going to be the double integral of the square root of negative 2x squared plus negative 2y squared plus 1, and then dA. Okay, so now here we got to be very careful with, let's just go ahead and write it as dA. Let's, I think... It's better to just um, continue <laughs> and then and then convert. So you can kind of imagine what's going to happen. So on in the inside, you can see that we're going to get four x squared plus four y squared plus one dA. And already, polar should be going around in your in your head because it, and it makes sense, right? Because you if you look here, both of these guys are two different circles. So you got two circles, right? between two circles and you want to find that that surface so we're going to go ahead and and convert to polar so we're going to have the double integral of the square root of in the inside is going to be 4 r squared plus 1 dA is going to be r d r d theta right now we got to think about what exactly my unit limits of integration for r and for theta are going to be well for theta it's super easy right that's just going to be 0 to 2 pi because we're looking at the entire circle, okay? And if we look at, at the region itself, we're looking from z equals uh, 5 um, all the way to z equals 0, okay? So you can kind of think about it as 0, right? Or wait a minute. Okay, so z equals 0 uh, and to z equals 5. So we, we need to figure out what exactly those regions are. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug them in and see what see what we get so at z equals zero let's see at z equals zero we're going to get zero is equal to and then the function is nine minus x squared minus y squared so moving that over we get x squared plus y squared equals nine so this is a circle of radius three and then z equals five so we have five is equal to nine minus x squared minus y squared so you're going to get x squared plus y squared equals, so I'm going to minus a 5 over, and what I'm going to get is 4. So it's a circle of radius 2. So it goes a circle of radius 2 and a circle of radius 3. Okay, so, and we're looking at that particular region. Okay, so my radius is going to go from 2 to 3. All right, so now let's go ahead. So this is a little bit of an aside. And now let's go ahead and use u substitution and get you solve for this guy. So I'm going to let u equal 4r squared plus 1. So du is going to be 
8R dr divided by 8, so you get R dr. So that's going to be my u sub. So I'm going to have the integral from 0 to 2 pi. Um, and then this guy is going to be the integral from 2 to 3. These guys belong to R. You're going to get the square root of u. You have a 1 eighth, so I'm going to pull it out. And then I'm going to have a du d theta. So this guy is going to give me 1 eighth integral from 0 to 2 pi. I integrate that. That's just going to give me uh, 2 thirds u to the 3 halves from 2 to 3. These guys belong to r, d theta. And then I'm going to end up getting, uh, so I can uh, so I can take this guy out. Oops, that should be a 1. This should be a 4. So I'm going to get 1 over 12. OK, and then it's going to be the integral from 0 to 2 pi. u in this case is equal to 4r squared plus 1. to the 3 halves from 2 to 3, t theta. So 1 over 12, integral from 0 to 2 pi. OK, so here it seems when I plug in the 3, I'm going to get 3 squared, which is 9 times 4 gives me 36, 37 to the 3 halves minus, and that should be 15 to the 3 halves. So all we got to do, I'm going to take out that all that constant And that's just going to give me 2 pi. So 1 half, 1 over 12, 37, 3 halves, minus 15, 3 halves. And then this is going to be times 2 pi, which in the end gives me pi over 6. 37, 3 halves, minus 15, 3 halves. So this guy will be my total surface area.